Inside Black and Gold coming off a buy. Steve Geller and Jeff Nowak here bringing you a week 15 edition coming off the buy from week 14. The Saints still live in the sullen, solo south. Tampa Bay lost. They got creamed by Sam Fran. Everybody loses. Everybody's bad. No, the the Buck, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Carolina won. What am I saying? The Bucks. The, Bucks. the Panthers keep on winning without Matt Rule. <laughs> And then the Falcons had off. So, yeah, we're, we're talking about the mishmash in the NFC South, and it's the story that just won't go away is the Saints being, quote-unquote, mathematically eliminated from playoff contention. Chris Paul sucks. <laughs> Chris Paul sucks. Oh, wait, that's the wrong podcast. Uh, it's true. It's true, but it's the wrong podcast. Yeah, no, I, 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 I made the promise last week that I would not talk about mathematical chances to win the NFC South anymore, and I'm going <laughs> to stick to that. At least for this week, if things get weird um, and like the Bucks keep finding ways to lose, you have to start talking about it uh, as unfortunate as that actually would be. But for now, I am not talking about it. Um, even if the Bucks go out there and lose 35 to nothing to Brock freaking Purdy, I'm not talking about it. But what I do want to talk about is, is what is an injury and when is it real? <laughs> hmm, it seems because that only comes Saints, in a question for the Saints. About a half million dollar question for the, for the Saints this week. With Cam Jordan picking up a, a fine, as well as Ryan Nielsen, Dennis Allen, and the team for they what were, the NFL alleged just, was a fake injury. They were just doling it out. They were like, you get a fine, you get a yeah. fine. Yeah. The Oprah of fines. It it was it, it's bizarre. Like, I get it. Like, I get what you're trying to do, but geez, it's not a good look. And we're gonna talk more about this. We talked to Cam in the locker room today. And based on what he's saying, what the team is saying, it's really not a good look for the NFL. But we're going to get into more of that. I also want to talk about Jeff Duncan from Times Picayune put out a column saying, hey, you know, maybe Sean Payton back to the Saints is not as far fetched as it might have once once seemed. And Steve, you got to turn that. You got to turn that around. There you go. Yeah, that's it. He's got it. He's still got the thing, the, the, the head on a stick from 2012. Um, so we'll get into that. We'll talk about I, I have one theory of like one um very plausible scenario where I could see it happening. I don't see many of them, but I do see one very plausible scenario. And we'll get into that. And we can and we're gonna talk about the latest, like, you know, Andy Dalton still a starter, gonna go against Desmond Ritter in his first NFL game. That'll be interesting. We'll talk about kind of what our expectations are for that. And also like, does the NFL actually hate the Saints? Because it sure <laughs> seems that way. So we're gonna get into that. But first, yeah, Cam Jordan had an injury documented there's an MRI, but the NFL decided that when he went down after a third down play before a fourth and 10, that the Bucks ended up punting. They deemed that he did that at the behest of Ryan Nielsen <laughs> from the sideline and that he was not actually hurt. And he was simply doing it to delay the game. And they decided to fine him $50,000. They find Ryan Nielsen $50,000, which, you know, you can say the players make a ton of money and that's not significant to Cam Jordan. I mean, it still is $50,000 to anybody is significant. $50,000 to the co-defensive coordinator, that's a big chunk of change. That's a lot of money. Um, so like that's significant. Uh Dennis Allen, you know, $100,000 his, his salary is probably significantly higher than Ryan Nielsen either way and the, and the team dealing with $300,000, you know, it's a billion dollar organization, you can you'll be fine. Uh but yeah, so not a I don't know, not a good look. Because what the Saints said is they, they, you know, he got an MRI. He has a foot sprain and he sent that, or they sent that into the NFL and we're like, guys, he's hurt. Like, why, what, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> and it's just, I don't know. What's only wild the Saints, too, this would only happen to the Saints. What's wild too, and it's against one of the players that's not just revered on the team. I think throughout the NFL, Cam Jordan's considered one of the, your top quote unquote men. You know, he was even nominated for the, the Walter Payton man of the year one season. And it just, it's a real, it really is a slap in the face to think that a, a player of Cam's caliber, at least is pulling this, the bullshit on the field. I, I wouldn't expect that even though if, if, if that was even, I don't even know if a coach would ask him to do that kind of thing. Well, here's what, here's what Cam had to say about it today when we talked to him. I love that because there's a whole like MRI that says I was actually hurt, which is crazy that somebody can tell you. And it's not even how you feel, how bad you're actually hurting. Um, yeah, I mean, to clearly 
address not even the elephant in the room the apparent fine that you can catch while being hurt sorry I uh, tweaked something in my foot um, I thought was a what I assumed at the time was like oh it might be a low ankle I was like let me just come off the field uh, get assessed and get back in um, ended up we had an MRI that Tuesday that showed it was a mid foot sprain somewhere around there um, and honestly, I'll let the team, you know, give you the scientific terminology for that because I do not know. I do know it ruined my bye week. I was here rehabbing, um, but that's what it takes to get back healthy. I'm with it. Um, we got four games left. I'm trying to turn the page. Uh, although I felt like my name's Loki, been slandered. Like I'm not. Like I haven't played with more or less. And even then, I went out, went to the tent, got taped up, got spatted up, and went back to the playing field and finished the game. I didn't even think this was an issue until. Thursday or Friday last week, my agent let me know the fine was coming. I was like, fine for what? I was like, I don't, I didn't, I punched the ball out. I was like, did I catch his elbow? Because, you know, he's running back. You know, sometimes you get nervous with the offense. Fines do happen. You know, you hit a quarterback too hard, you can catch a, a fine. I was like, dang. I was like, the play I did get hurt, I did grab Tom Brady. I didn't put a pillow down before he hit the ground. So that could have been a fine there. But no, it's because I got hurt and was trying to walk off the field and my team was doing the right thing by me by making sure that it wasn't anything more than what it was. Was there a... So you'll appeal? <laughs> I, I, the fact that I have to go through an appeal is is almost funny in itself. Um, if anything, the league should be like, hey, call in and be like, oh, there was an actual... And then that's the end of it. But apparently there's a, almost a half million dollars worth of fines. Just, you have to go through an appeal process. Was it 550000 Because I caught fifty. I think my position coach caught fifty. The DA caught... A hundred? And the team cut? I mean, that's what I saw in the ticker. If the ticker's right, you know. Under was was there an explanation that it was because they were spotted instructing you to do something? I, I saw a lot of I didn't of that, even see the explanation. You know, I, I thought it was just me. And I was is like, that why all four of them are involved, too? You know better than me. Okay. I mean, heck, I was worried. I, I was more worried about, like, how severe it was after the game than anything. I mean, right after the game, I took my cleats off. I didn't even finish. <laughs> like, I walked into, you know talking to other players with my cleats in hand um that's neither here nor there i mean i just feel that in terms of player health player safety protocols there's got to be a better way to get around whatever the situation is um even if it's a soft tissue injury you can't tell a football player how he feels in that moment and i think that last bit is important it's like so there's a very thin line between a guy going down with an injury because he doesn't feel like he can walk to the edge of the field and going down pretending to have an injury. And how could you possibly know in that moment? And I think that's what bugs me is like, why did the NFL react that quickly without saying like, you know, we're talking to the team, right? Like, so I think the biggest issue is Ryan Nielsen did tell him to go down. But the way Cam tells it, it's like, yeah, he's telling him to go down rather than limp to the sideline because he doesn't know how significant the injury is. But he is hurt, so he's not faking an injury. He is just taking advantage of the ability to have a trainer come out and attend to him not knowing how significant the injury is, right? So, like, yes, that I think Ryan Nielsen did say, just go down. But, like, why didn't the NFL try to find that context before just like dragging Cam through the mud and saying, okay, $50,000, send the check. Like, it's just not a good look. I don't know. It definitely feels like a little bit of a, you know, a personal attack on the Saints. I don't know. It's just weird how all these things end up coming against New Orleans. I can't imagine any other team in the NFL having something worse. Like, even well, if you're saying that, you can't. I can. I, I can see that Cam is hurt, and then you have Ryan Nielsen basically tell him to go down. Why, you know, limp off to the sideline when we'll yeah. come out to you, kind of thing. That I, I get that. Well, and the but, fact is, the injury is exists. It's not like you couldn't. You know, you, they got an MRI. He, he's hurt. Right. He he's not flopping he here. This isn't the World Cup. Right. Right. Well, that's the that's what makes it so funny is because it's go. This happened concurrently with the World Cup, which is like you know you know the world stage of pretending to be hurt yeah like <laughs> so, i don't know it's just so funny to me to watch that and you're like this guy's obviously not hurt <laughs> he's like you can see he just went he didn't even get touched just rolling around in agony um but, but, but yeah it seems like we're a really quick trigger i agree with you saying it's like there's there seems to be no real investigation into this before they came after the saints with a punishment right you think they could ask first right <laughs> 
And Dennis Allen wouldn't talk about it. Um, no, but the players would. Yeah, yeah, the players would. And here's what here's what Demario had to say. Anytime somebody get hurt in the game, that shouldn't be questioned. We, you know, we play a dangerous game, so nobody should be questioning if if somebody gets hurt in this game. Um, we don't. We're not allowed to talk about uh, medical stuff, um, and therefore, people watching the game shouldn't be trying to do the same. Right. Right. It's like, you're not doctors. <laughs> you don't know. Why wouldn't you ask the doctors? <laughs> anyway, uh, I will say that they did. The NFL did find Jesse Bates and the Bengals, I believe, for a similar situation. They are trying to kind of, you know, establish this and make an example out of teams as it's happening. Um, they did send a memo. So this is not like a surprise that they're going to be enforcing this type of stuff. But, like, I don't think the Saints are a team that, like, I'm not, they're not a team that I would say you look at and be like, oh, yeah, they're doing this all the time, right? Like, this isn't a team that would be high on your radar, and especially not Cam, a guy who literally never comes off the field. Um, like, I, I wish, I wish more of the injuries years. were fake. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just, it's a really just, it really kind of, unfortunate I, I don't know it's like already a shitty enough season like why are you twisting the knife with these stupid fines stupid fines and you could make the argument and i you know a fair argument that the saints would have been better off if he hadn't gone down with an injury because it sure looks like tom brady might have been winning the case to go for it on fourth and ten initially and then with that extra time todd post was like you know what uh, right <laughs> let's Let's send Jake Camarda out there. And uh, so, like, it didn't help his this team at all. It was just like, it, it, I don't know. It's just such a good example of, like, and I don't even want to say it's bias against the Saints, but it really, it's like, how could this constantly be a thing? How can you constantly be getting punished for things that everyone are doing in certain capacities? And yet this happens and all of a sudden, like not like a small fine. This is a half million dollar freaking fine. Like that's crazy. Yeah, and I'm looking here too. The the same kind of BS applies to Bates case, even though they're saying he, re, you know, cartoonishly fell to the ground. Yeah. Well, but the same amount of, of cash is getting fined to the player, the team, the coach and if applicable, the position coach. And it's like, damn, man, if you're a position coach, they're coming for you now too. It's just such a strange thing in a league where you can't get any calls, right? This is what you are trying to like in a, in a league where you have serious questions about health and safety and where you can't get the officiating, get anything right. This is where you're, you're really drawing a line in the sand, right? Guys who, you know, may or may not be hurt. Like that's, I mean, you can't even tackle a quarterback anymore, but God forbid the defensive lineman like sprains his ankle and, you know, it's just such a stupid thing. Um, I, uh, it, it, it's a, it's a big slap in the face. It feels like for sure. Just because, especially because they lost the game too. Like <laughs> it's not like it helped. It didn't help. And just, and just to like, we've talked about a, a player like Cam Jordan, that they're even trying to quote unquote slander. Like he would say it just, um, you know the guy's had an impeccable career. I mean, we know he we know him as the Iron Man, but you know he's also just been a guy that's consistent in his play, even when everybody seems to want to write him off with old age. Perception by much of the city is that the NFL just doesn't like this organization. I'm pretty sure that's just the perception of everybody, not a part of the city, including the city, right? Like, um, no, I mean we've got we got to find. At the end of the day, we've got to find our ways to figure out how to get the, these wins in. Do we think everybody's against us? Sometimes it feels like it. I would say, you know, we know we're not going to get calls that you know, other people get. But you know that being a part of the Saints, that's just something is what it is. If that wasn't the case, we probably would have been in the Super Bowl or two by now. Yep, that hurts. <laughs> He's my. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets fined for that. <laughs> right. That's more finable than his offense on the field. Right. <laughs> like, I, if they sent a fine for that interview answer, I would be like, you know what? That's kind of like, yeah, you kind of expect it. You know? yeah. Cam kind of popped <laughs> off there, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, but it's just, that's the season, right? It's just stupid stuff happening. Every week is something dumb that you can't explain. And this week, it's like, I don't even, like, it's not even something the team did. It's just like, oh, you know? 
is Cam hurt his foot. And it's funny because he said, like, it ruined his bye week. Like, he spent the whole bye, like, rehabbing his foot. Um, and he he's not even sure if he's going to be ready to practice on Wednesday. A true insult to injury is he gets fined for faking a, faking an injury that he has. That he has. A real injury. Right. And, like, sure, going down – and here's, the, here's kind of the thing where you have to kind of figure it out, right? Because he was actually hurt. Did he have to go down there? That's a question. But does he have a right as an injured player to get treatment from the training staff before he plays another down? Like, what are his options there? What are the alternatives? If you are hurt and you're not sure if you can play another down, you're going to limp and hobble to the edge of the field? You're going to waste the time out? No. Well, you're gonna that's go how you're supposed to do it. Claw your way back. Claw your way back to the sideline. Well, right. Like, so you are – so by doing this, you are – you are encouraging players to like potentially worsen an injury so that they don't get fined because you can't differentiate between a guy who is hurt and going down versus a guy who is faking it. And you know what? And I don't think it's that difficult to identify. In that case, it wouldn't even have made sense. They were deep in Bucks territory. It's not like it was a long drive that you were trying to catch your breath. It was a third and it was a fourth and ten. Yeah, situationally it doesn't make sense either. But like I I mean it's kind of funny where you mentioned, you know, Brady arguing with the head coach about going for it. Uh, who who knows that that time may have gotten the better of, you know, the Bucks head coach to to not go for it there. Yeah, no, it, it it's stupid. And like I remember, I can't remember I, what game it was. I think it was Sam Bradford when he back on the Rams, and it was like the first drive of the game, and it was like a twelve play drive, and the guy just goes down with a cramp, and you're like, okay. You know, like that's clearly fake, uh, but it's like that. You can at least like from context clues, right? Like, it's uh, it, I don't know. It's like it's just a gotcha moment that didn't exist. I, I don't and, know if it's because of the way things are now, but I can't recall of teams ever being fined for that, huh? No, it's new. It's new. Okay, they're, they're enforcing it, and they sent out a memo, right? So they told teams, you know, we're going to be enforcing this. So blah blah blah. And I don't think that's like. You know, it's like they get a memo and then all of a sudden, because I, I, this isn't something the Saints do, right? Like, I don't I don't recall this happening. It's not like, like you watch all the games, you would be aware of it if you saw guys just constantly going down with fake injuries. It's like, no, guys get hurt in a game. Uh, yeah, like I said, I, I wish half of the injuries that they, they've had this year were fake. That'd be great. Yeah, that would be nice, right? If the injuries weren't real. <laughs> uh. I, I mean, there, there's there's got to be some kind of proceeds with this where it gets reviewed and, you know, Cam's MRI gets submitted as evidence exhibit A. Well, they are appealing it. <laughs> right. It, it, but but like he said, now his his name kind of gets tarnished a bit because it gets brought up in something like this. And now your Joe Schmo thinks, oh, that Cam Jordan, he's just trying to get by. He's a cheater. Well, no, that's why they're appealing it. But, like, they shouldn't have to appeal it. They should just be like, our bad. <laughs> well, he reminds me of the the DeMar Davis, like, man of God thing, right? Right? When he got fined for that. And they were like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, They didn't appeal we're, that. We're kind of big douches for even thinking about fining you on that. Sorry. They rescinded it. Yeah. They, he didn't even appeal it. He didn't even have to appeal it. They rescinded <laughs> it. And but it's apparently in this case. terrible. Well, I right. Mean, from a so P- from PR. So is this. I think this is worse because this is a league that, you know, earlier this season we're talking about how they can't even protect players from their own head injuries. And now it's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you were you were only kind of hurt. Uh, <laughs> well, now some dirt just, on it. <laughs> but, yeah, but now it just feels like, well, wh- why are you kicking us even more right now? We, we're, yeah. we're at the bottom. We're at the bottom we're, here. The Saints are literally, and I and I don't say this to be mean. I say this just in the very literal sense of the term. The Saints are the worst of the worst. <laughs> they are the worst team from a record perspective in the in worst the division in the worst conference. <laughs> but but there's still a chance. <laughs> but they're the team that's getting fined half a million dollars for competition issues. Anyway, I think we've talked this one to death. Um yeah, I'm, I'm. I mean, obviously, it'll be something interesting to see how this plays out. Will we get an answer in season on this, or it's going to be some kind of footnote after the Super Bowl? Oh yeah, we, the findings that we did uh, end up 
reviewing said the Saints were uh, not guilty of any um, malice or, you know, using trying to get anything in their advantage in the game with a timeout. The NFL won't announce it. No. Right. Um, this, though, it, they announced. If it'll come out, well, they, they didn't announce the fine either. It just ended up coming out from someone? Yeah. Cam announced it. No, but we knew that going into the locker room. Yeah, he tweeted it. No, this was, wasn't the, – the NFL doesn't um, publicize their fines. They just send fines to people. We only find out if a reporter thinks to ask um, or if a player volunteers it. Like, DeMario's fine, we found out because DeMario tweeted yeah. about it. Right? This fine, we found out because Cam tweeted about it and then Pro, Fo Pro, Fo Pro Football Talk wrote a story about it. So, like, the NFL doesn't want these fines publicized. So, they're not going to – say oh our bad we we rescinded this but cam would probably say yeah the nfl said they're stupid and they rescinded <laughs> it so like that's how we would find out but it's also not going to be something that affects like a, from a competition perspective right like they're not getting doc draft picks and they're not getting anyone suspended so there was no reason to um fast track it if that makes sense i don't think the nfl fast tracks anything huh well, they do. Well, so, for example, you suspend somebody for something and they appeal it, which means that while they are appealing it, they don't have to miss any games. So the NFL will want to get that done expeditiously so they can just get it get it over with. Right. In this case, it's just money, which they'll be like, OK, well, if we say that you're right, you get to keep your money. If we say you're wrong, you send it to us. And that's not going to change whether it's this month or next month or the month after that. So I don't think we're going to get an answer anytime soon. Um, but it is stupid. It's stupid that we have to be that it has to go through an appeal in the first place. And it's stupid that of all the people, of all the players in the NFL, that you would just be like knee jerk reaction. Oh, he's totally faking an injury. Is the guy who literally never gets hurt, plays every down of every game, uh, missed his first game in twelve years with an injury, and it's like he's not going down unless he's actually hurt. He never comes off the field. Period. That's not what happened. And anyone who is paying even the slightest bit of attention would be able to identify that that's not what was happening there. Anyway, that's going to wrap that up, that segment of Inside Black and Go. We're going to come back and we're going to talk more about the other guy who uh, uh, we don't really understand that much. Sean Payton, where's he doing? Where's he going to go? Well, might be back to the Saints. Stick around. We're going to talk about that. Say what? <laughs> And we're back here on Inside Black and Gold. I'm Jeff Nowak along with Steve Geller. But the question that we should be asking is, will there be someone else coming back? Hmm. Hmm. That's a question that, I, you know, I, if you had asked me two weeks ago, I would have said absolutely not. Sean Payton, that's who we're talking about in case that mystery was confusing you. Sean Payton <laughs> will not be returning to the Saints to be the head coach. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, but Jeff Duncan from the Times Week U, and he put out a column, you know, he talked to people close to the situation, said, you know, it's it's a it's a really it's on the table. You know, it's not something that's ruled out. I still think it's unlikely, but like, you know, you kind of think about it like, okay, well, what if how badly does Sean want to come back to coaching? Right? And if there if a market doesn't develop for his for him to be traded, you know, maybe he would come back and coach the Saints. Um, the question then becomes, do the Saints want him back? And that's the one I'm not sure about. Yeah, see, to me, daddy left for a reason, and he ain't coming home. I'm sorry. Um, see, but no, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's true. Like, I, I genuinely didn't think he left the Saints because of the Saints. He left the Saints because he needed a break, which I understand. And I think that's very true. I don't think he, he you don't ditched think he because of the, the situation Saints. that they were into and kind of said, now's a good time to take a break. Well, I mean, it, it is a rebuild <laughs> situation. That's true. But it, no, it wasn't, it's not as bleak as some other teams you'd end up on, right? Like, I don't think that he quit because he didn't think that he could, it was, it was an unsalvageable situation. I think he quit because, like, from a mental perspective, he needed, to, he needed time off. Um, but, and that said, I still don't think he wants, I don't think this is his desired location to come back. Um, but, you know, if the Saints see it as a situation where it's like, man, this season just did not go the way we had hoped. We have the option of tearing down the entire staff, of tearing everything down, of starting fresh with somebody new, trying to run it back with Dennis Allen, 
we're seeing if we can reinstall well, you know, some of that some of that Sean Payton magic. I think it's 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 possible, but I do wonder, you know, how some of those relationships within the organization have fared throughout this process cuz I find it really hard to believe that everything was amicable on the way out the door when this guy just up and quits. Right? Like you can you can say all the right stuff, you can put on the right face. That's not a that's not a comfortable scenario when when like someone you were depending on just says see ya, you know. Um, you know, and they'll so, all hug, they'll smile, but like Sean leaving put a lot of people in a very precarious situation that they didn't have to be in. And you could you I would not hold it against anyone if there are if there's some like lingering resentment there. Yeah, and just to me though, I look at it as with Peyton, he left he left the team and you know look at the situation now is it is it really it's might have it might be worse now because if he comes back the guy doesn't even have a first round pick to manage and so who we'll just have some fun what who's who's his quarterback next year well so okay here we go like <laughs> there are there so there are scenarios where i could see him coming back one is <laughs> a the Chargers, who I think are really the one team that I, I think have the assets and the need for a head coach with a quarterback that they think is the future. In I don't like think a that about Arizona. Game. I don't think that about Las Vegas. I, I don't think that about uh, Dallas. I mean, maybe Dallas, but I don't think they're going to fire McCarthy. Um, I don't think that about Carolina. But the Chargers, you know, if the Chargers come in and say, hey, okay, we're two first round picks. You're like, even if Sean did want to come back, you'd be like, sorry, we want the picks um and send it right like i don't think that him wanting to come back would 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 sway the franchise away from being like oh we can get a freaking ransom for this guy yeah sean go hang out in san diego with justin herbert all right so like if that happens i don't know i think it might be off the table but in there's one thing that i know to be true is if drew Brees had retired in 2019 right tom brady would be would have been the quarterback for the saints in 2020 Wild Drew Brees didn't retire. Tom nope. Brady went and coached the Bucks. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, went and played for the Bucks. Um, and and there you go. Tom Brady is a free agent this year, and he just got divorced. He's not quitting football now. He's going to play until he's 50. He's going to try to prove a point. So where is he going to go? Well, he wanted to go to Miami to 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 hang out with Sean. That's not going to happen now. They're not firing this guy. Mike McDaniel has been excellent. Tua has been great, right? So that's off the table. So are the Bucks going to hire Sean Payton? I doubt they're going to try to trade for him, right? If you're the Bucks and Tom Brady really wants Sean Payton and they're like, we'll get rid of Todd Bowles, but do we really want to give out first round picks to a division rival? No, that's not, not going to happen. happen. Right. So right. if they wanted to team up, it would have to be somewhere else. Maybe Carolina. Ugh. Again, another division rival would have to trade for him, right? So you kind of look at it. It's like, well, what if these teams won't make that trade? And where where would it make sense? Well, the Saints are currently starting Andy Dalton. It's not like... You know, this isn't a situation where you're like, wow, I am. You know, they're not starting Jameis Winston. So if it ends up being a package deal and Tom is like, you know what, Sean, let's go hang out in New Orleans. And Sean goes to the front office and says, hey, guys, I know you're still kind of mad that I ditched y'all. And, uh, you know, I know it wasn't fun out. having to figure out this last season. <laughs> but uh, have you ever met my friend, Mr. Brady here? <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, uh, yeah, that guy seems familiar. Maybe we can make this work. You know, uh, yeah, it's like, um, you know, it's like when you get in a breakup and then you like lose 50 pounds and you're like, oh, yeah, I wish you did. Anyway, um, that's the scenario that makes sense to me. Uh, and so, you know, and if that was the case, like, like, I'm not sure that because I think the value of trading Sean at this point might be higher than bringing him back. Because of what you said, because it is a rebuild, and because I think that bringing him back might trick you into not making some tough decisions that probably make sense. But if it's Tom Brady coming to town, and you get just just the the, the experience alone of having Tom Brady as your quarterback, and like the ability to be like, yeah, well, we're going to see what happens, and the excitement that brings, that would be worth it in and of itself, in my opinion. Do you think? You think what does Sean do with Dennis if he comes back? Now that's that's where it gets awkward, right? Like that's because I don't know if there's been a there has been a example in NFL history <laughs> of a head coach being back. demoted on his own staff and staying there, right? That doesn't really happen. So if if Sean comes back, do I get more Pete Carmichael calling plays? 
No, Sean would call the plays, but I do think he would keep Pete Carmichael as offensive coordinator. So, like, I think that would stay the same. The question is, what happens with Dennis Allen? Do you fire DA? Because, like, if you think of it this way, like, he's not well, going to head coach job. You're going to lose Richard and Nielsen then. I don't someone, know. Someone else will hire him. Before. So, yeah, do you demote them? Do you demote everyone down the line and say right. DA is the defensive coordinator and then these two guys are the position coaches again? Sorry, oh, that'll Sean. work. Sorry, Sean's back. You got to go back to your old gig. But like, and it's like, oh, but if and if Dennis Allen gets fired from another head coaching job, if he doesn't get a chance to write the ship here and his lasting legacy is two and a half horrible seasons with the Raiders and one horrible season with the Saints, that's it. Kaput. You are not getting another chance at a head coaching job. So like from his perspective, Maybe it would make sense to, to take a step down and be like, you know, I'm pretty good at being the defensive coordinator. Maybe we just keep doing that. But then, yes, you probably lose Ryan Nielsen and Chris Richard. So it gets sticky. And that's why when I say this front office might be really hesitant to just go down that road, that's why. Uh, you know, not, they're not going to hold like a real grudge, but it might be enough that they're like, we're not going to bend over backwards to make this work for you, dude. Like you could have done this for us. <laughs> um, and so, but but it is it is fascinating because like, you know, I don't think this team's going to fire Dennis Allen uh, in this offseason. I, I don't. I think they want to see if he can he can fix things. But if it's if it's a Sean ba- Payton, Tom Brady, uh, gift wrapped package deal, that might force your hand. And that's just kind of where I see it. Yeah, I kind of feel with Allen that they've seen enough buy in from the players. They don't see a team that's disjointed at all. It's still together, and you got to give the guy more than one year. So I, I think though there could be, if things go disastrous next season, I could see something happening within the year kind of deal. And then you promote like maybe like a Ryan Nielsen to head coach in the midterm, but no, nothing's happening anytime soon. I'm just speculating with that as well. But to I, know, me, I mean, unless something, something weird happens and that's my point. Yeah, and that to to me though, I just don't think Sean would do that to Dennis either. That's a good you point. Know, I mean, it's just I, I I don't know. It's just it's a really tough. I I can't understand wanting to come back from where you just left after the year off. I think I just I think explained if anything, why. <laughs> I think if he's if anything, he's ready for a complete new scenery, not just coming back to New Orleans. I definitely believe yes, he's going to be a head coach next year. And I hope the Saints can get uh, a, a Banks truck full of, you know, draft picks in return for him. But I just cannot imagine that being with the New Orleans Saints. Again, I agree with you in every <laughs> scenario other than he's bringing Brady. He's bringing he's coming Brady. with me. He's bringing Brady. And, and the reason being, it's not like he can just go pick a spot and say, let's go meet up there because whatever spot that would be would have to be willing to trade for Sean. And, and that might not be on the table, right? So like that is the one thing. Again, I'm not saying it's likely. I'm not saying that I expect it to happen. I'm just saying like, what's a scenario where it would make sense? That's better than any like reality show soap opera shit right there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is like the multiverse right here. Right? Yeah, that's right. Um, but I know it's it is fascinating because you know it it doesn't just show up in Jeff Duncan's column because people aren't talking about it like that. I want to know who the 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 source is close to Peyton. That's that's the like is it is is his barber or is it like the guy that walks his dog or like who is it? Yeah, <laughs> it's the Furby I planted in his. Is it, in his is it what's his name? Jake Glazer. It's it's actually the Furby that I planted in Sean Payton's <laughs> office, and you know every couple of weeks I go in there and I just you know like oh my gosh he's talking about it, I know because the Furby said so. Man, I, I, you know what though when you say you know in this bizarro crazy scenario, I mean that's the NFL right now though, so it it makes it gives me actually more hope that that could actually happen. I'm I'm not so close minded to it being a possibility. It just it would seem so wild for for Sean to come back in a role after so many adjustments the team has had to make without him, even though they're they're try, trying to follow. We keep hearing, you know, the Sean Payton way of doing things, but bringing the king back, I don't know if that's possible now. Like the they've kind of moved on. Do you think but Sean would? Do you think Sean I don't would? Think anyone Sean, would be against it? 
Do you think Sean would sign on to be Dennis Allen's offensive coordinator? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess whatever the paycheck is, it depends, right? right? As long as he got paid three times as much as that you, you, Right, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> like you deal with all the other shit. Uh, I'll, I'll call the offense and you're going to pay me $10 million a year. Sold. Right, done deal. Good deal, guys. <laughs> He's like, I'll even keep Pete on as like the quarterback's coach or something. The co-offensive coordinator. Yes, right. <laughs> those are like the best gigs when you're like a co something even though i yeah. feel like that's not true because that that means just sh more shit piles down to you i'm sure maybe you're gonna blame the other guy right <laughs> you have to do one interview every two weeks you know what that probably works for them because they're, they're at least they're not like oh i gotta do this shit again this week because I can't imagine, even though Dennis Allen's not in front of us all the time, you know, sometimes he, he gets to do the phoner, but that's got to be exhausting dealing with the media. Well, it's not even as much anymore, so he doesn't have to have a Thursday availability when it used to be Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for head coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Because who wants I don't to know. Say, saying the same shit over and over again? Yeah, that, like, yeah, that is one thing about like the the head coach press conferences. Like, by the time you get to Wednesday and Thursday, it's like, what are we asking you this time? <laughs> like, it's, it's rare that there's anything new by that point. Um, but yeah, but no, that's my, that's kind of my thing, and and I do think it's interesting. It's interesting to talk about um, because I don't think you're bringing in a head coach next year, um, in general, uh, but. Uh, if you're if if you're thinking about bringing in a Sean Payton, then maybe he's that got, changes. He's got Brady in his arms. <laughs> he's swaddle a, a swaddle Tom Brady. He's carrying him into town. You know, he's saying he doesn't even have any kids to talk about anymore. He's got you know he's all he's thinking about is football, and he just wants to show up and and show up Drew in his own building. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, it's like hey, you want to be you know the golden child of the NFL? Actually, you know what we talked about how the NFL hates the Saints. The NFL also hates Tom Brady. Uh, so maybe that's a, maybe that would be a bad thing. Maybe that would be like, you know, the perfect storm of like <laughs> deflated footballs and fake injuries and bounties in the same locker room. That's a lot. I don't know if you could take that. Well, Goodell would find a way to, you know, find the Saints for having tampered with Tom Brady or somehow. Well, the other thing is if you did get Brady, you would also, every time Don Brady signs somewhere, everyone wants to go play with him. So it would turn you back into like an ultimate free agent destination. And so that to me would be like the biggest, the biggest benefit. It's like it could, it would get awkward with the coaching staff and you'd have to figure it out and you might have to fire some people. It might get awkward, but like you'd bring back, like everyone says like, oh, everyone wants to play for Sean Payton. Everyone wants to play with Tom Brady. Like you put those guys together, free agent city, baby. But you'd have to pay Tom like $50 million to get done. <laughs> <laughs> and probably make him like part owner. Yeah, I mean, this has definitely gone beyond Madden uh, franchise mode, I feel like. Yeah. yeah, no. No, it's fun to think about. I I, I don't think it's going to happen as confident as I have been. But that again, that's the one scenario I have, and I'm sticking to it. Um, that's all I got on that. You want to bring up anything else? No, but a quarterback wise, I think we've talked about it a little bit where I think you feel the same way. Jameis isn't back next year, but I do think Andy is. Yeah. <laughs> right. See, that uh, I mean, and I know a lot of Saints fans don't want to hear that. No, yeah, um, we're gonna we're gonna get into more of that uh in the in the final segment. We're gonna talk about quarterbacks both on the Saints and elsewhere and, and yeah. a few other a few other topics. So stick around on inside black and gold. Who likes a good quarterback? Apparently not the Saints or the Falcons. <laughs> We're back on Inside Black and Gold. We're talking about quarterbacks. Ouch. And uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm a big red rifle fan. I was I do find myself wondering if he had if he had like brown hair, would he be in the NFL without that nickname? Well, he he couldn't be whatever. Yeah, I guess the brown shotgun. The brown bazooka. <laughs> green, green. that's better that's better uh it's not the mormon missile but it's better um no so 
there's there's this funny thing that keeps happening every couple of weeks with the Saints is that the reporters ask Dennis Allen, um, who's going to be the starter this week, <laughs> and and it's become very clear. <laughs> It, and then the funny thing is it gets reported as like, oh, Dennis Allen is saying so-and-so is <laughs> sticking with Andy Dalton. Yeah, but it, it's become very, very clear that like <laughs> this is just a question that's being answered because it's being asked. And I don't think it's being asked throughout the week at all. And I've said this for a while. I don't think that there's an internal debate over whether Andy Dalton or James Winston is going to be the starting quarterback. I think there should be one, but I don't think there is one. And when I say that, it's because this is how Dennis Allen answered that question today. Yeah, Andy will start. That's it. <laughs> Want to hear Bruh. it again? Want to hear it in case you Andy. thought you missed any context clues? Yeah, Andy will start. Yeah, Andy's going to start. And, like, does that sound like a guy who spent a whole lot of time, like, debating, oh, should we start Andy or should we start Jameis? No. Andy's the starter. And like I said last week, one of the reasons that I think you're sticking with him this year is you intend to stick with him next year. And whether that whether you that that makes you happy or whether that makes you very 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 upset, I mean, brace for it because even if you go and draft a quarterback, even if you find a way to like bring in like a Will Levis or somebody from you know, a guy out of Kentucky, or you trade into the back end of the first round, or maybe you trade Sean Payton and get a mid round pick because you're not going to get a high pick, but you might get a mid round pick. Um, you know, you're 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 not starting that guy probably, so you're probably going to stick with Andy as your bridge quarterback in that scenario. So like, this is not a team that wants to create a quarterback controversy in the last four weeks of the season. This is a team that just wants to find a way to win a couple football games, to be very, very honest. And that does not include changing the quarterback. No. And I, and I, I, you know, I understand everybody wanting to see something from Jameis Winston. I think we're all pretty much on that boat where we'd like to see what he could do, but for whatever reason, Allen and, de and definitely Carmichael are set on, I think Dalton as the guy. And for whatever reason, not wanting to go back to, to Jameis says a lot to me, obviously, because he went into the season as your quote-unquote starter. Yeah, it tells you everything you need to know about how this team views Jameis or how this coaching staff views Jameis yeah. at the very least. Yeah. Um, and so this is what DA said when he was asked. You know, obviously, it's like last four games of the season. You know, even if you win all four, probably not making the playoffs, right? So. Like, you got to start evaluating stuff and, like, seeing what you have. And, you know, Jameis is under contract next season. So, unless they do something with him, he's going to be on the roster. So, here's what he had to say about, you know, how they're going to kind of evaluate that. I think we'll, we'll, we'll evaluate everything as we, you know, finish out these last four games, you know. Um, but, I look, I, I think, you know, Andy's, Andy's, Andy's done some good things. Um, I think we've got to do a lot of other things around him to, to to help him, and that includes, you know, us as a coaching staff putting everybody in better positions. Everything they're going to evaluate everything except they're not changing quarterbacks. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's where you're at, and it is funny because you're going up against a Falcons team that is actually in a better position than the Saints as it pertains to competing for the NFC South title. And what are they doing this week? They're going to Desmond Ritter. And now they announced they're putting Marcus Mariota on injured reserve. Um, so that's a factor. I right? can't believe he lasted this long. Yeah. But, like, so this is a team that's that's going to see what they have in that quarterback. And it's what the Saints are going to see in their first in his first ever start next week. Yeah, and I know that's always actually scary to go up against a rookie quarterback because of the unknown. And yeah. it just seems like that's when – you know, they'll have the best rookie outing in the history of the NFL kind of thing against the Saints. Well, there's no film. Like, who, what are you scouting? Um, you know, you've never seen him play an NFL game, right? So, like, you can Whatever go back you and get from scout. preseason, I imagine, right? And that's yeah, not you can even. Scout the preseason, you can scout Cincinnati. You, but, like, there's only so much you can you can do. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it is pretty easy to get caught by off guard in those situations. And who knows how much he's going to run. He's going to be a little, you know, I think it's probably, that's one of the easier things you can do is, is prepare for the type of offense that he's going to be utilized in because you have seen it. It's going to be similar to what they did with Marcus Mariota, but I think he probably has a little better arm talent and you probably do have him sitting in the pocket a little more. So maybe that changes things. So yeah, it, it but it is funny to watch these two teams kind of go in, like are both in very similar situations. Neither of these teams should be in the playoffs. Neither of these teams is good enough to be in the playoffs. 
I'm just going to say it. Like, no, they're just going like, holy shit, we're still around. We're yeah, still hanging and, in and there. So the, I think the Falcons are kind of like, yeah, okay, well, we'll see. You know, maybe maybe Desmond Ritter is going to be just good enough to lose us the final four games. Uh, and we're going to get a good draft pick and we're going to keep building. And maybe he'll be good in those final four games. And you can feel like this is your starter next year. But if not, hey, better draft pick. Um, and yeah, so it's... But this is where you would do it, right? If you were going to change quarterbacks. And that's why I I don't – I'm not giving anyone a hard time for asking the question about Andy Dalton. But I think it's become very clear for this team that they are not changing quarterbacks. And, yeah. And for the whatever reason, too, because we've joked, too, that what is – what is J- Jameis Winston's ailment right now? Because he, he's not showing up on the injury report with anything. No, he's not hurt. It's not a health issue. They've made that clear. It's not a health issue. It's just, it's to me, it's like you said, it says a lot about what they're doing and how they feel about Jameis, honestly. Yeah, it's not a health thing. He, he, he could be... I mean, he probably is still dealing with some lingering issues with that foot in the back, but like I was gonna say, with the the extreme condition they were saying his back was in, I don't think I, it was I that figured, extreme. Yeah, but the healing process of it. Eh. I mean, he played through it. How extreme could it have been? He played through it. So, like, it's not like he couldn't play through it now if they wanted him to. Whatever state it's in, this is not a health issue. This is a the Saints, Dennis Allen and company want to start Andy Dalton. No ifs, yeah, ands, or buts. Sure. That is the scenario. And um, I don't know if there's that, you know, and Andy hasn't been that bad. Like we, we can complain that we want to see Jameis and whatnot. The Saints aren't losing games because of Andy Dalton. I would agree. Um, so, yeah. It's kind of just like one of those things where it's like, okay, you're, you're struggling. You want to make a switch. So you're going to do everything you can. And that is one of my criticisms of this team, but maybe it's under, maybe it's overblown is like, I don't know if they're doing everything they can to shake things up, but maybe, maybe those wouldn't help. I, I don't know. Um, no. So do, do you think Winston's also back next year or no? I, Cause I don't, I, mean, I don't think there's any, the you've basically, you, you've told everybody how you felt about him right now. So is he really going to come back to compete to be a backup? Well, he's under contract. So it's not like they would have to re-sign him. Um, I think he would try to move him. But, you know, you're not gonna, I mean, they you actually got... did pay him like a decent amount of money. Like not crazy money, but like not, you know, what the, what the Falcons paid Marcus Mariota, right? So, I mean... In order to trade him, you would have to say, okay, what team wants to eat twelve million twelve million dollar salary next season? The Colts, right? why not? Um, and and eleven million of that is dead. And then so like if you cut him, that's gonna cost you eleven million dollars. So that's tough too. So I don't know. It's it, it's tough. Um, because this team, you know, obviously I think the salary cap situation is usually overblown, but it does make it so you can't just accept dead cap hits to get rid of a guy um that's why uh, you know everyone wants to know too do you think michael thomas has played his last game in the saint as a saint un- in a uniform i don't know the answer to that but i would think he's got to ha- take a pay cut somewhere yeah i don't know i don't know it's, those are questions that i just don't know if you can answer at this point in the season but no no but it's just it's just a whole big mess that you know there's going to be to unravel at some point yeah I agree with that. Um, God, it's just there's still a month left in this goddamn season. I want it over. I want it to end so bad. But then you don't. You're going to miss it. And then we're going to be doing podcasts talking about who could the Saints take in round two of the NFL draft if I, they don't get I, a first rounder. I will not miss any of this season for the, a single second. This has been the most frustrating, pain in the ass season. I have I have wa- seen since I since I've been here. Okay. Um. Obviously, you want to go back to the early two thousands and whatnot, and things sucked. I I did the seven and nine back to back to back Greenbrier years, and those those sucked. weren't as bad. Those weren't as bad as this season. 
I was pissed off though because of the whole Greenbrier experience. I think so. Those seasons were worse for me. But from a fundamental perspective <laughs> of like why you're losing games and you know, I, I no, you had Drew Brees in the offense. It just the defense couldn't stop shit. Right, you always felt like you were just kind of like a couple a couple wins away, and you just never got there. But then you like the very similar teams and rosters. You went thirteen and three, thirteen and three. Like like the the frustrating thing about this season and this this team and this setup is it there's no upper trajectory of it. It's like, this just feels like the team and this feels like the ceiling. Mm. Uh, and maybe that's not true. I got a cold chill over me right there. Yeah. But it's like how I felt about the giants all those years. It was like, no, it's like this is your, this is, this is, this is the best you can do. Um, and but, yeah, but it hasn't been because there's just been so many underperformers from key people Number one being the shadow now, who's avoiding the the media, Alvin Kamara, uh, because of his you know quote unquote legal issue, is what he was saying. He doesn't want to talk football either. But man, what what a terrible year! And I know he wasn't didn't have the greatest fantasy outlook because of that impending suspension. But you've gotten per, you've gotten touchdown production from him in one game, and that's it. Yeah. That's wild. It's Alvin freaking Kamara. Well, yeah, and, and do you do you anticipate that this is a one year thing, or is it just kind of like, oh, has he has he kind of fallen off, right? Like, I don't know, but it's not like he's a young player. It's not like this. He's like twenty four, and you're like, oh, he's got three good years left at least. He's twenty seven, and you're like, hmm, maybe this is like the the downward slope, uh, and you just are now kind of seeing it. It, it's I don't just know wild because we haven't seen those quote unquote matrix plays from him this year. And even without maybe the continued run up the middle with Alvin, there have been other plays where he's been in space and just and has just hasn't looked like his, his self this year. And that's just wild to me. Yeah. I'm not sure, but like wide receiver, Mike Thomas, who knows? The fact is, this is why paying skill position players. But well, why is Brady coming with Sean? <laughs> why? Yeah, money. Yeah, he's eternal. I don't know if they can even pay Brady. They could pay Brady. They would trade Jameis. They would. They would. They would send. <laughs> they would trade Jameis over to Tampa. <laughs> Cash considerations. Yeah. No, they, they'll they find it. They were going to pay just Sean Watson. I mean, they'll, you could find a way to pay your quarterback. Um, they can they can create the cap space and see what's funny. You, you look at that. Look at the Saints avoiding the Deshaun Watson debacle, the Russell Wilson debacle. I mean, things could be a lot worse at quarterback right now. Believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> no, there's, there's a lot of teams out there that don't don't have good good quarterbacks. Right? There's a lot of quarterback needy teams, and even teams that took quarterbacks high in drafts. Are still quarterback needy teams like so? I think there's an argument to be made that you build the team and then you find the quarterback. You look at San Francisco right now. Um, you know, you look at you know, it's That's like there are exceptions to those rules. Obviously, like you have Joe Burrow, you have Bat Mahomes, you have Josh Allen, but like it's hard to get those guys. And right, you don't you don't force it looking for that talent, right? And if you miss, and if you end up with Zach Wilson. That's a huge, huge, huge setback. Um, but the Jets were bad for long enough that the team around him was so good that they were able to just throw some rando in there and still be decent. So who knows? It feels like we've we've had quite the year for backups, I guess, this season. I don't know. Like who? I don't know. I'm just thinking with Mike White and now with uh, Purdy. I don't know um, if that's it. I mean, obviously, Dalton was Garoppolo. the backup, and now he's the starter. Dalton. Um, Pickett, Ritter. But these are rookies, so they're supposed to get in. Did Seattle start with what's his name under center? Um, oh, what's the – I can't th – he was on Denver. He came over in the trade. Drew Locke. Drew Locke? Yeah, did they start with him at quarterback? No, it was Gino okay. the whole way. Yeah, other than that, I can't think of – oh. Uh, P.J. Walker. Right, P.J. And Sam Darnold. <laughs> they just keep they're just looking for any quarterback in Tyler Huntley. 
Um, so I'm just naming backup quarterbacks. Oh, played. Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett. Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> oh, Tyrod uh, has who's, who's the Colts backup? Sam Ellinger. And then they went to. They went back to Matt. They went back to Matt. Taylor Heineke. Who just? I think the Giants should bench Daniel Jones and play Tyrod Taylor. Has it been that bad from Danny Jones? No. I was gonna say I don't think he's the issue. I'm just being unreasonable, just like the Saints fans. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I but but I get it though, in a sense, just because you know we always kind of joke that you don't lose your job because of injury, but that's BS. Sometimes a guy comes in and takes over and just is better. He's better and has the things running that you you want. Um, but with yeah, but Jameis, I'm not sure that guy's Andy Dalton. No, no, I know, but it just doesn't. It just doesn't feel like Jameis has had a long enough run. I don't know. It's weird, and I'm you don't not- know what you have, and that's and that's the reason that I don't think this team has any interest in Jameis because he didn't. He hasn't. He had. He played seven games last year. He got hurt, but he was good. You know, he did the job. Then he played three games this year, all three of which he was hurt for, one of which he led a 16-point comeback in the fourth <laughs> quarter. The other two, he was hurt. So you don't have a sample size for what maybe no, he no. could do healthy in a game. So, like, and and to not play him now means you don't need it. You don't want it. So, yeah, like, like we, we we've gone pretty far into that, but, like, that's pretty clear what they're what they're saying with, with those decisions. I'm just uh, anticipating a wild offseason, no matter who's head coach, uh, just because there's going to be so much roster shift. Um, well, yeah when when you bring in when you bring in Tom Brady and Sean, everything's going to change. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brady Brady will definitely bring Gronk back. He's looking good. And then yes. Gronk will unretire, <laughs> right. and then the Saints will get fined seven billion dollars and seven draft picks for tampering somehow, bringing back their own head coach. <laughs> it's gonna happen. Bring, You're gonna bringing happen. back their own head coach. Yep, that is a fine for sure. They get sued by Fox or something. Um, yeah, that's it. It's all right. We got the Pelicans. We get. We still. We got. We got the Pelicans. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it through. At least it's something, First right? Paul Stocks. Who's who's to, who knew that football would just be a pit of misery this year? I didn't I didn't think it'd be this bad for the Saints. Obviously, no, but everyone else did. So we probably should have been. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's Vegas talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's frustrating. I, I I don't know that. Just and I, I know that the people love to go blame the trainers on this, but. Man, they've had an absurd amount of ridiculous injuries. Old Which, guys, right? Am I right? Old no, dudes? but but not, Marshawn's not an old guy. That was like a freak. I don't want to say a freak injury, but he's an old soul. <laughs> well, I'm I miss his old play because he's got old organs. Um, the Saints secondary misses him, and the the defense misses him, obviously. Um, uh, but. You know, we'll see this week, and you know, we'll be talking injury reports again. Yep. The Saints, are, we'll find out more about guys like a lot of more. Yeah, you- we're still getting back into. We're getting back into. I, I'm having a hard time like readjusting back into. It's weird because it was only a week, but like from no, Monday like gone forever, right? To then now we're on the bye week, and then we're into Sunday, and then next week is Saturday. And there's been like nothing. There's just been basketball to follow. Yeah. Although, hey, go UConn, number three in the country. <laughs> mm. LSU's not quite there yet. No, no, this is UConn's year. Most successful college basketball program in uh, in history. Well, what what about you? Uh, At least the last like twenty five years. <laughs> I was gonna say your boy wouldn't. We're gonna cut out UCLA from this discussion. <laughs> last quarter century. Four national championships from a cow pasture in Stores, Connecticut. <laughs> Look it up. From a cow pasture? That's really where it is. It's the middle of nowhere. Mansfield, Connecticut. Stores. Um, all right. 
We'll start talking about UConn. So that means we have long run out of topics. Um, yeah. Anything else? Any parting words, Steve? Uh, just that this team doesn't seem like they've they're ready to mail it in as much as the fans are right now because at least everything that the the voices we're hearing are saying is, you know, four games they want to win out. Obviously, there's no there's no talk about packing in there ready for next year, and really. I mean, the, what are fans rooting for at this point? Because you're not rooting f- to improve your draft position. Yeah, they're not giving up. The players aren't. No, but, I, but I mean, like fans, what are they rooting for? Nothing. They, they've like, given up. Misery? I've given up. They've given up. Um, so we'll see. I mean, what, what, you're in evaluation mode right now if you're the Saints, right? You're just trying to, trying to figure out who's I, there for next year. Who's really am already, year. yeah. And from a fan perspective, that's really tough to watch. Um but hey, you know, you can argue that it could be worse because you can at least watch the game and hold out some crazy pipe dream hope that they can get to the playoffs, which in basically any other season wouldn't be the case. So hey, you know, from that perspective. I, I'm looking at it as take like little thing, little victories right now. And the little victory this week is sweep the Falcons for the season. That's it. The little victory this week would be an actual victory. Well, yeah, win win one, lose two. So we're in the cycle to win one now. Yeah. To win this game so that you could lose the next two and not feel any worse about it than you have the rest of the year. All right, that's it. That's the that's the tweet. That's the end of this episode of Inside Black and Gold. You can follow I Steve over at Steve Geller, WWL. You can follow me at Jeff underscore Noak. Go check out WWL.com for all the latest headlines. Sports Talk, 4 to 8 p.m. 105.3 FM. No, AM 105.3 FM. No. FM 105.3 AM 870. I got to see it. So I usually say it AM at 70, FM 105.3, and I get it all mixed up. Also, always free on the Odyssey app. That's where you can find this podcast. But wherever you listen to podcasts, you should hit that subscribe button and give us a rating and give us a review because we like that. And yeah, that's it. Who dat? Go Saints. Stop losing. Pluck them dirty birds. Chris Paul sucks. Peace, y'all.